All right, we're back here at Sydney Nationals Speedway, second meeting since it's been reopened. Few changes already. The team has put a little bit more clay down on the racing surface, especially going into turn one and two. Some of the drivers last time saying their bottom of their frame was bottoming out, so that's only going to help the racetrack now, so that's an awesome job. And also, last time the infield runway was uh, a lot dusty, uh, sandy dirt, and the fans were getting a bit pumped over there. Now they've wet it a lot and actually washed away a lot of it. So now we've got more of the concrete there, which is only gonna help the fans in the stands. And they've made another great change. So that's two already, second night into the new speedway. Can't wait to see what we see tonight. Alrighty, engine starts have just gone out now. It is pretty windy and very chilly here at Sydney National Speedway. Cars are rolling out for the engine starts now. Then we have our uh, wingless heat racing, three rounds, and then the Spring Cups will do their hot laps and time trials. This track uh, should have a lot of moisture in it. We will find out very soon, especially even the wingless uh, should set up the track absolutely perfect for time trials tonight. Hi, Matty. Uh, last day on the crash crew, mate. You've been at Parramatta for how many years? Mate, to tell you the truth, I think it was eight years, I think. Eight years at Para, and then you were first here at Eastern Creek as well. I mean, I know you and James were best mates. It's been a lot. Now you're moving to Queensland. Uh, what's tonight mean to you as your last night? I'm sure you're going to get emotional later. Yeah, man. I don't know. I might make it to the first heat. I might make it to the end of the A. I don't know. We'll see how we go. All right, mate. Well, I'm sure all the Sydney Speedway fans, Parramatta fans, appreciate all the effort you put in, the, the sacrifice you put in. You know, it's, it's volunteer, you know, you're not getting a cent, but without a guy like yourself, we couldn't get racing. So, uh, thank you so much for all you've contributed. No worries, man. Thanks, hey. Like, this is probably the coolest thing that I've done in my whole life, and it's been every Saturday night that's been on. I absolutely love it. And if anyone wants to do it, I'd say do it. We had three wingless heat races, uh, really good racing. Uh, middle to bottom, uh, I think now the sprint car hot laps are going out now. Then we'll get straight into qualifying. I think this track will slowly get to the wall. It got a little bit, you know, that little grey twinge through the middle, just what we want heading into time trials. was just out going into turn one i just missed it i was following sam Walsh. matt dumsney was caught up in a massive wreck in turn number one and two uh, i don't know exactly the other car but he's getting out as well uh, we hope matt's okay that car looks uh, pretty wrecked right now we'll try zoom in on it and see if he's okay Qualifying right now uh, with that crash of Dumsley and Mahoney. Both of those cars are out. Uh, Dumsley has a bit of sha uh, chassis damage on the top uh, where his seat connects to, and Mahoney said they're not putting a new diff in tonight. It's over, which is unfortunate. Um, from what I've heard, uh, Dumsley got up on the infield a little bit and collected Mahoney going into one, which is unfortunate, especially in hot laps. But uh, move on, time trials ready to go. Hi, Pretty. What's up, vlogger? <laughs> First time uh, watching the new shape track. What do you thought? Flight one time trials is in the group. It went Troy Little, Doc Goodyear, and Jackson Delamont. One, two, baby! Qualifying flight two in the book. Sam Walsh went quick time, followed by Benny Atkinson, and then Jordan Brazier. Flight three going out now. Time trials is done for the night for the 410 spring cars. Daniel Sayer in flight three goes quick time, followed by Michael Shute and Lachlan Corn. Legend cars up next. Here with quick time, flight number one, Troy Little. Uh, mate, talk us about your time trial laps. Yeah, uh, look, uh, Gary Wilmington's done a fantastic job on the track, getting it open for us. Got to be happy about that. You got Marty out there on the grader, and uh, look, it, 
it, uh, it we, with the wind that we've got at the moment, we, th we didn't expect it to uh, hold up as well as it did. And basically, just a nice smooth lap. Tuck your little elbows in, keep, keep the car straight, and hold your foot on the gas. Uh, what would you say the difference is as the added clay compared to the last time we were here? Did you feel much difference on the racetrack? Oh, definitely. Last time that it was it was quite abrasive, you know. Um, and it was very slick, but an abrasive slick. There's, there's different types of slick, like a cold slick where the tyres don't wear out and things like that, but it's still a, a slippery surface. And then there was the abrasive slick. Out there, it was quite locked down. There was something leaning on against the ledge there with the right rear that kept the car nice and straight. But uh, my team, Pit Stop Auto, has got this 20 end uh, Maxim running really well. Hats off to everyone. And uh, yeah, the little team that could. Let's see what happens in the feature race, eh? Good luck in your heat race tonight and have a good night, eh? We'll do our best. Thank you. All right, here with quick time, uh, Sam Walsh in flight uh, number two. Sam, uh, just talk through your time trial laps. Um, chasing moisture, really. I mean, there's not a whole lot out there, and it's kind of cool, actually. I mean, to be honest, I think they've got the track perfect for the weather conditions. It's cool, and obviously the sun's going down early this time of year, so it's good to have it dry straight away, and we're not going to be dealt a mud hole, you know. So, um, yeah, just try to find a grip where you can and try and, yeah, try and be a little bit crafty about it. I tried to run the bottom in three, and everyone was trying to bang the fence down. I thought, oh, I think I can shortcut it a bit, but... I guess it worked, but it was that finite, you know, either way I think it would have worked. Yeah, I think they've got the track absolutely perfect tonight. A lot more room heading into the heat race. It's not already on the wall. Uh, where should that put you in the system tonight out of your heat race? Uh, I believe they're inverting four in the heat race, so we should be out of four, and then uh, we've got to run top two to make the dash. So that's, um, yeah, that's going to be the interesting part. All right, good luck tonight, mate. Thanks, mate. Here with Daniel Sayer, quick time, flight number three, mate. Talk to us about your two laps. Yeah, a couple of pretty tidy laps. Um, pretty happy to... You know, get on top of this car finally. So um, happy to lay down a couple of laps and try and push forward tonight. Uh, did you feel the difference in the track with adding more clay from last meeting? Uh, not really. It probably took a little bit longer to blow off tonight, but um, still pretty racy, pretty fun. Gets up near the fence there, so um, should provide for some pretty good racing. All right, I'm definitely getting a step next time. <laughs> uh, good luck starting out of four in your heat race and you go forward. I uh, hope to see you near the front tonight. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. Alrighty, we're out here for heat race number one. As you can see, the track right now, there's a whole car length up on top where last time it was literally on the wall. Uh, a lot of the drivers, um, it's going to be very tight entry here, so it's very juiced up. I think if you're in the front, it's going to be very hard to get uh, track down. Um, but it's going to be a lot different heat race than we've seen here last time. Very fast, and I think, yeah, leaders win tonight in their heat races. But anything can happen. Watch out for race cars. Let's go. Start of heat race number one, as you just seen, going into turn number one, Jackson Mel Delamont got a little bit loose. Uh, Jake Baines had absolutely nowhere to go. Hit the side of Delamont and Madison Hat was just behind him, collected Baines as well. It looks like Delamont is okay at the moment. The left side might be a little bit damaged and Madison's also front wing damage, but off, but Jake Baines is out, unfortunately. and third went to Troy Little Heat Race number two up next.
Heat race number two in the book, Sam Walsh from fourth to first. What a drive. Uh, Benny Atkins got all the way to second as well, but coming to the white flag, had motor troubles pulled in, which gave Jordan Brazier the second spot. So it went Sam Walsh, Jordan Brazier, and Alex Shaw. Uh, that makes Sam Walsh, Jordan Brazier convert to the dash. Top two to the dash. Heat three coming out now. Board, Lachlan Corn, Alex Saddard, Michael Stewart, Sayer, Ferguson, Manif. There's your top six. Heat three. Coming to the wide line. Out there, Lockie Corn goes to the top side. Stewart looking on the bottom. Here comes Sayer on the outside, coming into turn two. Corn lead there. Lockie Corn now. Michael Stewart, what a move. Gets himself up into a pole position. Dash position, sorry. Lockie Corn goes to the top side now. Michael Stewart, they've all gone upstairs. Ferguson stays downstairs in fifth. Sayer. Big slide job in turn number three. Michael Stewart. Very smooth. Adard goes to the inside of Sayer. Doesn't get it. Caught now. Eight laps remaining. Stewart goes to the bottom again. Stewart, big side job. Gets the job done now. Coming out of two. They're all on the top side now. Stewart, Caught, Sayer, Ferguson, Adard, Manif. Oh, caution. Caution in front of the leader. In the exit of turn number two, the 74. Single file restart. Stewart, Caught, Sayer, Ferguson, Adard, Manif. Great restart there, Corn Corn sleeping there. Stewart has already got about a six car left lead there. Ferguson has pulled that wing right back. He has tucked it now. Stewart is gone. Here comes Sayer on the back side of Corn. Ferguson has definitely found something on the bottom of three and four. Stewart is rolling the top side now. Watch Ferguson. He's sticking that nose on the inside there. He's coming on Sayer. Loves tyres there coming out of two. Ferguson's definitely got something in three and four. Michael Stewart's in a different postcode at this point. He is gone. Two laps remaining. Lachlan Corn now in second. Michael Stewart cruising now in the lead. Saya, slide job. Coming out of two. They're coming to the white flag. The position they're racing for now. Gets him into the dash. Can he do it? Saya goes upstairs. Looks too good. So see you later, Corn. I want the dash spot. It goes Stewart. Sayer, good. Now Ferguson, Adard, and Manif round out heat race number three. All righty, heat race number three. Seen Michael Stewart take the victory, followed by Daniel Sayer and Lachlan Court round out top three. Top two there, move to the dash. Uh, we're actually going to check out something pretty cool here. We're going up to the Chief Stewart box, uh, have a quick chat with Wayne Baines and uh, try and mic him up and see what he does for the dashes. Sprint cars, I need you to stay. It doesn't stop. All tweeds against the wall. The wall truck's going to come around on the bike track beside you. So stay in close to the wall and push you off from there, please. Give room for the water truck. Mate, it sounds like it doesn't stop. Copy, mate. I need to out the quickly. 72, don't go across the water trucks in the centre. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. I'll let you know when the centre's clear. Yes, mate. Copy that. How long have you done this for? I've been, sure been a track steward and a race director for probably close on 10, 12 years now. Um, been, been an official for the Sprint Car Club for you know, near on 35, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, somewhere around there. So, um, these are all gone, so I'm just going to have to cut the switch off. You just do you when it's flies and all Where's my pace car? Pace car coming out after this 57 car. The 57 car coming out of turn four. Follow him down the front straight and I'll bring him to you. Yeah, I've done 21st back in the bay. I'm just trying to close it. Pace car now, now. No pace car. Bill, he's talking to you, Bill. Out, out now, please, out now. That's it, perfect, thank you. Okay, sprint cars, your track's clear, your pace car's down in turn one. Come and form up to your pace car, please. Yes, yeah, Scott, go ahead. Track work will be where it's scheduled in the rule, uh, in the run sheet, so it'll be after the Legion Car Race. Yeah, the track work will be after the Legend Car Race, guys, yeah, where it's programmed on the run sheet. Okay, thanks, drivers. We'll go next time round.
This time, please, base down. Okay, drivers, lights are out. We're going to go this time round. Whole cars side by side, nice even pace to the white line. Accelerate on the green, please. Dash is on the board. Mark will show it. Sam Marsh up the front. Show it to the bottom. Big side job on Sam Marsh now. Then it goes back to Brazier. Scorchy and Sayer in the backfield, but look at Stewart. Stewart squeezes uh, Sam Walsh there. Now down we go, he's a turn number one. Jock's trying to move through now, but it looks like Michael Stewart has it now. To the inside, Sayer is battling now. Jock with a side job. Michael Stewart is absolutely gone tonight in the A-dash. Frazier in third, Sayer in fourth. Goodie back in fifth, Scorchy round down the field. Michael Stewart is about in a different postcode right now. The 14 is ripping right now. Maisie is blocking. He's sliding everywhere. He's getting traction. Here comes Goodie. Sayer to the top side. Sayer's got the run on Brazier. Brazier holds the bottom. Sayer gets Brazier coming out of turn. Number two. Here comes Goodie. Brazier's falling backwards. He's struggling for the grip, it looks like. Sayer still got third. Goodyear gets Brazier. Brazier's got something on Goodyear. No, he doesn't. Coming to the track and flag. Michael Stewart. Followed by Sam Walsh. Sayer, Goodyear, Brazier. And Scorchy round down your dash. Your pole sitter tonight is Michael Stewart. And out of two is Sam Walsh. Dash number two, these are positions seven through 12. Grant Anderson off the pole, Morosky, Troy Little, Alex Shaw, Lachlan Court, and Warren Ferguson. Again, seven through 12 for your A main tonight. Coming to the white line now. Great start, Troy Little to the bottom. Can he send it in? He holds the bottom beautifully by Grant Anderson, right around the outside there. Grant Anderson has a race lead. They're holding the bottom. No one's really upstairs right now besides, oh, yellow, yellow, yellow. They might be bringing that restart back. Chief Stewart did think so himself. We will actually ask Wayne why that one was pulled back after, um, just to see what he was thinking about, and we'll talk about the replay as he explains it. That's pretty cool that we've got this access. Restarts, double file, six laps to go. White line, Anderson gets it. Oh, down the front straight, contact. All got into the back of Roski, I think it was. Nearly lost it. Very, I think the rear end may be out of that car though. Wow, looks like Ferguson got a piece of that. The front wing is damaged on Ferguson's car. And Troy Little has a bit of front wing damage as well. We might get that on the camera. Ferguson's front wing and Troy Little's front wing. Uh, the restart there, Anderson got a great jump, but let's check the front wing of those two cars. Ferguson with a bit of damage there, and also Troy Little with a bit of damage there. Nearly the exact same damage on that front wing, run right, run left. Looks like maybe Troy Little is pulling to a stop there. That front wing may be hitting the left front, which is extremely hard to drive and steer that race car. All right, we're pushed away out of all of that. Um, looks like all the cars are ready to go. That rear end is okay on Alex Hall's car. Troy Little stopped to check for a safety reason, I think, on that front wing. But everyone's okay. Uh, he did get in the back of, um, I think it was Morosky. We just watched the replay, unless I'm wrong again. Um, sorry, Lachlan Corn out of all of this, has moved up into the fourth position. Let's see if he can capitalise a few more spots for the A main. Oh, Morosky got the jump, but Anderson found some juice on the bottom. Slides up into the race lead now. Troy Little with that damage front wing. is still pushing up into third. They're going middle to top side now. Everyone has gone away from the top in three and four. Anderson in the 88 end. It's looking good. Morosky goes back down to the bottom. Caught on the top side. Caught back in four. He's trying to hold off Ferguson. But I do think the bottom is coming in now on both corners. Little, little with no front wing. It's still throwing side job. That front wing. He's definitely handling that car different, but it doesn't seem to affect him. He is moving on Morosky now. Anderson is out in front with a big lead. Morosky back to the bottom, through past Little. Little trying to cut, and now Ferguson. Ferguson up to third. Lord follows, what a race the RB is. 
We're going to see these cars battle. Troy Little back to the top side. Back to form. Anderson is cruising on the top side. Three laps to go. Morosky back to second. Ferguson is third. Ferguson is finding something on that bottom side. Morosky has pulled that wing right back down. The battle is on the floor. Ferguson is finding something on the bottom. Look at how much that wing is pulled back on Morosky's car. That thing is tucked back in the trunk, baby. Wow, Corn has smoke coming out of the left side. Bit of oil overflowing there. Again, Anderson down the front straight, takes the race lead. Morosky, Ferguson, rounds out your top three. So your sevens through to 12th full lineup like this in tonight's A mate. Starting out of seven will be Anderson, eight Morosky, ninth Ferguson, tenth Troy Little, eleven Flockland Corn, and rounding out your field, starting out of 12 in tonight's A mate, will be Alex Hall. Oh, we got gotcha. you. Sure. Just your thoughts. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you're the Chief Stewart. The restart was pulled back. Talk to us just what you've seen and how you process that Sure. And, and on the first one, Ando definitely went early. Like I say to him on the race receiver, they've got to come to the white line and they accelerate on the green. Um, both cars, and it, both pole cars picked it up well before the green came on. But because the pole car went, the outside car felt it had to go, otherwise there'll be a rep behind it. So the call was on the 88 for start, for jumping early. Then then they wanted to play games and I had to let them know that we were watching them. On the second one, I actually thought the, uh, the 16 might have picked up the gas a bit earlier, but he actually lost out. And by the time they got to the white line, they were side by side. So we decided to let it go because no one else behind them was disadvantaged. So. That was, uh, that was the reasoning behind that. If anybody got disadvantaged behind the 16 on the second start, we would have pulled it up for the 16. All right, Wayne, well, good luck for the rest of the night. Uh, we've got some track work coming up soon, and uh, Feckerbeck is on track now, and uh, thanks for letting us in here and seeing this awesome insight. I'm sure a lot of people have never seen this, and especially literally having a restart pull back, yep. now we've got the thoughts, and now people yeah. can see it in a different light. No, I appreciate it, mate. Anytime you want to come up, come on up. Um, uh, like what sure. you're doing for the sport, the way you're promoting the sport. Really appreciate it. Nah, thank you for the comments, mate. You're welcome. Zoom in on that bad boy, Benny. Oh, precision. I was uh, following the incident. Uh, why Alex was able to keep running the left um, front wing post snapped off the chassis. Uh, they've been grinding and welding it. I'm sorry, grinding it. Um, they're about to weld it back on, so we're going to move back. Uh, it's one of those things where it's sort of lucky that you, you're able to have to be able to weld it. Um, but yeah, they're in the A main, starting I think out of position 12. So still want to move forward and have a good night, finish off their night. A legend card in the background, Mr. Pole Sitter, Long sure, mate. Talks to us about the dash and you know you're just waiting for the track prep pretty much at this point. Um, well, yeah, I suppose just to see whether I've got to pump my balls up or whether I'm uh, good as I am. I don't know, but. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty fun running the boards like that. I've never been right up on the fence like that and run it well, so whether I can do that for 30 laps or not, who, who knows? We'll see. Well, I think you're pretty capable. You can steer one of these. Um, normally, like track work, probably going to grade the bottom, maybe. I don't think they're going to touch the top, or maybe just bring a bottom back in for a two lane. Uh, is it more just waiting and waiting to get the lap traffic and see what happens? Like, it's pretty much a hammer down race till you get through lap traffic and then best man wins and. Sometimes it's better to be in second. I mean, last feature race here, it probably was better to be in second. What are your thoughts when you're leading an A main? Is it like, I just got to be as best I can and see if someone sticks their nose, and if no one's sticking my nose, keep doing what I'm doing? Well, I'll tell you after this, because I probably haven't led enough races to find out. Um, I guess when you get a lap traffic, you're just hammering down. Like, you're trying to just go as hard as you can. You don't know where the guys are behind you. When you get lap cars, you got to try and pass them. So I guess you're watching the lap cars as soon as you can see them, seeing where they are, trying to pick where you can go. When they're racing, like when you sort of get past the first five or six guys, that's when it gets a bit harder because they get a bit faster. They're usually running your lane. It can be a bit harder to pass, and that's when the second place can come to you. But I sort of like that too because it brings the race into it as well. So you sort of know where you're at speed-wise. I guess these things 
if you can get to the front, the wing comes into it and you can sort of just pelt out good laps and stay in front. Like I, think, I feel like the dash doesn't give you a good indication of everyone's car speed because you just everyone's out there hammered to the four for six laps, go as fast as they possibly can. So we'll, we'll suck it and see, I'll tell you after. All right, well, you, you didn't try to sound too professional. You went in and out, you know. I'm not a sponsor. I'm just a little old code man, but I appreciate your time and good luck to my brother. Alrighty, Sprint Car B main is out on the track now. Uh, last chance showdown. Uh, taking 24 cars to the A main tonight. Let's go track work just happened. Uh, let's see what the track looks like. B main done and dusted. A main lineup is set and ready to roll. Bit of a gap now with uh, the wingless B-Main. Legend car A-Main rolling out now. Uh, top six transfer just sent. Uh, Jake Baines got the win in the B-Main. Uh, second was uh, Madison. Great race. Um, it's gonna be, I think it'll get up the wall, but the bottom's in right now too. Very, very hooked up. So then we're gonna have a very great two lane track. And it's gonna be interesting lab traffic, I think. Hey, so here we can see it now, there's definitely a defined top and bottom. Uh, this looks like a great A main track right now. The bottom looks very juicy compared to the top. Not real cushion, just a bit dusty to the wall, but that nice uh, dark slick section there. Watch your back, Vinny. He's gonna create uh, a lot of slide jobs and also to um, the court. No. Oh, that's wet, that's wet, that's wet. Uh, that's gonna create, <laughs> that was scary, bro. That's going to create a lot of, um, you know, racing side jobs. Like cars are going to pick. It's uh, going to be, uh, I think, a really good feature. They've done an awesome job with the track again. Uh, two from two in my book, man. This place is cooking right now. Uh, the dust has been better tonight. Uh, you did hear from Wayne Baines that dust went off, uh, monitors went off over the drag, but I think that was more from him for the strip that they have got better again from uh, night one. So. Uh, Again, ticking all these unreal boxes and uh, this place is built for spring cars, baby. Well, I did have to add, the legend cars are unreal around here. We just have one of the best feature races um, I've seen in a, a legend car on uh, clay dirt, dirt clay or whatever, uh, because it was too wide. They could get near the top, you know, through the slick, you know, driver style. It was a really good watch. Um, probably one of the best uh, legend car features I've seen in a long time. Back to Parramatta Day, so this track's very good for legend cars too. So another another big tick. Uh, Wingles have had a great night too. Uh, yeah, just been a great night again. Great racing. Literally front straight of the A-Main Matheson. Massive tumble down the, the front straight. I only just seen a clip of it in the video. Uh, we got the end of it. Uh, let's hope he's okay. And try to see the replay on uh, the video.
massive. I just took my eyes off it. Watch the battle for third and fourth. But unfortunately, Michael Stewart looks like he got into Alex Adard. I don't exactly know, but it looks like Stewart is out of the car. We'll try to get a word with him exactly what happened. Hopefully someone got it anywhere and we can all see the replay of, I didn't see it, but we'll try to get Michael's point of view. But damn, he, he had a great chance of winning tonight. has had the race lead, Jock Goodyear in second, Jordan Brazier in third. Sayer's car looks really good. Uh, this is gonna be the battle of lap cars. Like, the, the track's great on the bottom right now, but then it, as soon as they get the lap traffic, they have to go to the top because everyone's on the bottom. So it's definitely gonna be interesting lap cars. Um, I know they're always a key, but tonight they are massive. I'll start off with saying that was probably one of the hardest things I've had to film. Someone beat me mate like that. <laughs> <laughs> but mate, congratulations. That uh, probably one of the still one of the best friend cars mates I've seen. Just talk me through that feature. You were committed to the top. Jordan was so good on the bottom, but again, it was just patient lap car. Okay, I've got to run. Yeah, no, obviously the lapper there was sort of stalling him and, you know, that curb up there definitely ain't easy to run, I'll tell you that, but, you know, it's just awesome that we've got two grooves around this place and, you know, it's, it makes it interesting racing like that and, um, you know, this this Sala Motorsport car, you know, it's fast, man, so I'm just, uh, you know, privileged enough to be able to jump in another face, fast race car and put it to the top step and, um, yeah, I'm just stoked, man, that's cool. Would you say that it actually 
from last time it actually built a curb, not just got to the wall, or it's very similar? No, it, it, it built a curb. It had enough in spots to be able to lean and bump off, which was really good. And it had a lot of attitude, which was enough to catch the car without unsettling the car. So, yeah, what they're doing here at this facility is, um, you know, they're, they're pointing in the right direction. So, obviously, these next few race meetings, obviously, they're just trying to get them their feet and get this place open again. And, um, you know, I'm just excited next year we come back here and hopefully they put on some big dollar shows. And Yeah, we're going to bring that 22T back a lot. Yeah, no, that'll be back. All right, mate, congratulations. Thanks, man. Thanks. All right, brother. Brave second tonight. Got done on the line. Uh, talk to us about how your aim aim started. Where did you start at about fifth? Yeah, I started fifth. You know, uh, it weren't too bad. Just uh, you know, got beat by Josh. I mean, you know, can't do much about it. Uh, how did the track plan out? You said uh, like you were the one of the best cars by far on that bottom. Jock didn't even try to touch it. Just that lap car held you up uh, last few laps. Talk to us about how your car felt on the bottom uh, compared to everywhere else in the race track. Yeah. I felt a lot better on the bottom, you know, kind of got rubbed down, you know, halfway through that race and, uh, you know, I got to the lead and just thought, you know, I'll stay here, but I mean, you don't get out the rubber when it's down, but, you know, just got caught behind a couple lap cars and there yeah, Jock was. Again, mate, the car and yourself, like the last two meets, just progressed so far. Uh, you can definitely drive a race car, brother. Um, you know, you're waiting for the next race meeting here. Um, anything else like you can do okay, to this car, you feel, or it's just it's ready to go? It's just right place, right time. Uh, you know, just right place, right time. You know, we were struggling in the heat races and in the dash. We were too good, you know, just spinning tyres. But made a few changes and, you know, I think we've led 50 laps in two weeks and haven't won, so... Uh, real better. quick, talk to us about that. You, you were right. Like, you were good in time trials. But then it did look like in those two, you were just searching for grip. Um, like, what changes did you make? Was it just you know, a few shocks or different tyres or different gears or something like that? Like, you, it was definitely, like, from last week to this week, struggling for grip in your heat races. Yeah, it didn't change too much. You know, they touched the track, and I think the track kind of came to us. Yep. But, you know, we changed a couple of shocks and, you know, little bits there. And, um, you know, obviously we were a lot faster. So, uh, one more spot next week. All right, mate, uh, you know, I love you to death and, uh, you know, we'll get that win, eh? Yeah, no worries, thank you. Hey, third place, Daniel, uh, say it, mate. Uh, talk to us about your aim, mate, and just, uh, you know, as it progressed, you know, I thought you had the car to get Stuart, but yeah. then you, you progressed on and then just talk to us the events. Yeah, sort of um, had a pretty reasonable start, I'd say, to the race. Um, Michael sort of just had a pretty tough pace. Oh, he was gone. Honest. He was yeah. fine. And, um, I sort of middle part of that thing where he was in a bit of traffic, I sort of felt reasonable um, and actually got by him for a little bit there. Um, unfortunately, what happened with him, because I think it would have been a real neat, neat race at the end there, but um, I mean, got to the lead after that restart, just didn't feel that great, to be honest. Um, sort of hear Jock and Geordie behind me and just didn't know what lines to pick, and I obviously just picked the wrong ones, so let Geordie pass and, and Jock. Um, Sort of race there at the end, and, and Jock went that one done. So, um, I mean, all in all, pretty good night, reasonable. Um, rolled it in straight, and we'll come back in a couple of weeks. Uh, how was the track tonight? Uh, you know, bottom looked great. We praised you on it. Good, you stuck to the top, like you said. You didn't exactly know where to go. Yeah. How was that track as a driver's perspective? Uh, tricky. Like just just in the fact that that both lines were very similar in speed, um, but both very technical. Like. The, the top line, real paper thin, sort of powdered up on the fence there, and, and the bottom was quite narrow. So both those guys done a better job than me, and they're running those lines, and, and that's the way it panned out. Uh, last thing, yep. difference uh, between the, this is the first time I spoke to you about it. Difference between the old uh, track to the redesigned track. What are your thoughts on it? I love it, mate. It's, it's so much better now. Um, Marty and then the track crew have done an awesome job. Um, getting nice and wide and really racy two lanes as, as we've seen tonight in the feature race so um, they can keep up their work with that we're going to have a, a pretty handy track on our hands all right mate uh, good job tonight i'll see you next time thanks mate cheers let's wrap up tonight um we spoke to jock out there uh he absolutely loved the track again uh, we spoke to sayer you know loved the track i uh, just spoke about how tricky it was for him while he was leading talk to jordan he's just gutted uh, to get pinged like that, I couldn't imagine that feeling. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to film because uh, one of he's one of my best mates. But hey, I'm in it for the whole sport, so uh, I loved it, but did it at the same time. Uh, again, this track, I can't express how great this track was again tonight. That cushion is crazy. 
right now. Like we spoke to Jock, you know, he was like, it was unreal to be up there. Um, some of the boys though were still saying it was paper thin. So again, I've never raced one, so I don't know what that means. Maybe they didn't feel like they could lean on it. Um, but that that we didn't see that last time. Last time it was just flat to the wall. That means like they're gonna create like they can be not scared to hit the wall. They can get that right rear on it, which is awesome. Uh, then if we go down to here, Jordan was locked in and really good here, and he felt like we can see these really dark black bits. He was like it was that grippy. Sort of felt like it might have been taking a bit of rubber. He goes, I just didn't want to get off that bottom because I was scared someone's going to get under me. In a leader, I couldn't imagine that pressure. You don't know if someone's banging the top. Like, Jock never really showed his nose until he was right over there in turn number two. Uh, we just spoke to Gary uh, Wilmington. Uh, he was absolutely stoked about the night as well. I thought it was a great night again. They ticked all the boxes. And our, the legend cars are bloody awesome. Wingless had a good race as well. Um, I spoke to Gary this Tuesday. They're actually bringing more clay. Um, we might do something with that. I can't wait for that. And just to sum up it, if you haven't been here yet and you used to go to Parramatta, get your butt here. The drivers are stoked to get here. Um, yes, it's late in the season. We might not get as many drivers, you know, because the end of season, they might get motor rebuild or it's just, you know, all that type of stuff goes into it. Last thing I will say on the night, we have Speedway Racing back in Sydney. Get here, support it. I can't flaunt fla uh, this track because it's my home track and two, they're doing such a good job. Like, we got Marty Perovich used to race for cars. Now he runs a late model, so he would be upset if the track wasn't good. Braden Williamson, Gary Williamson, again, Speedway people. Braden even raced tonight, won the Legend Car feature race, so he would have said it was a bad track as a racer himself. Um, people can say, you know, oh, you're just saying all this stuff, but I'm not. I'm, I'm from, the, from the ticker, and this place is just awesome. And I'm just happy to promote all Speedway. That's why we love to do it. And, um, you know, get here next meeting, Sydney International Speedway.